Setters, Gardeners, and Cooks. My name is Jennifer. Welcome to Miles Away Farm. We are making jambalaya. And this recipe is mostly one by Rachel Ray and then just kind of adapted and from various other recipes on the internet. But we're starting out here with one large onion. It happens to be a red onion, just because I have a lot of red onion in my pantry that I need to use. Two stalks of celery, and it called for one green bell pepper, and I do not have any green bell pepper, and so I'm using some of my frozen red bell pepper that I happen to have on hand. We're gonna get this in the pot and get it sauteing. And then we're gonna start layering in all of our other glorious flavors. I'm just gonna put a small pinch of salt in there in order to get these to release some moisture so they sweat a little faster. We're gonna saute this for about five minutes and I'll bring you back when we're ready to start adding some spices. This is a teaspoon of cumin, a heaping teaspoon of homemade Cajun seasoning. And this is based on Emeril and Paul Poudron, if I'm saying that, Poudron, his original recipe for Cajun spice mix. And I just mix up my own, but it's based on their recipes. And I'm just giving this a stir because it's homemade and it's, so it's a little bit clumpy. I just want to make sure that it's not too clumped up. And because this is a creative Rachel Ray recipe, this is calling for a teaspoon of poultry seasoning which is not a bad mix. And this Cajun spice mix is a mix of uh, cayenne pepper, black pepper, white pepper, garlic powder, a lot of thyme. I don't remember what all else is in there, but very nice spicy mix. Very good for blackened Cajun stuff as well. This is sweating down very nicely. The recipe originally calls for andouille. We happen to have made some homemade linguisa last year and so I'm just going to use the last of that in here instead. What I'm doing right now is called blooming the spices and so before I add any of the liquid I'm going to throw the spices in here and let everything get good and hot with all the oil in the pan and that's going to help um, bring all of those volatile oils that are in those spices alive and it smells absolutely amazing right now. I'm gonna throw in my sausage. This has been smoked, but it's not, it needs to be warmed up and cooked through. So I'm just gonna give this a minute or two before we start adding all of our liquids. Just to see if we can get a tad, a bit of color on there. Mm, this is gonna be so good. For thickening power, we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of flour. We're also gonna add some chicken and some shrimp to this dish. The shrimp we're gonna add right at the very end because they're gonna cook very quickly. And the chicken is already cooked because it's from a smoked chicken that we had a couple of days ago and it's the leftover. So I'm not going to add it until we get everything else going and meld it together here. We're getting a nice fond on the bottom here. You can see from that flour. All right, we need one pint jar of tomatoes. One pint jar of homemade chicken stock. And you can see how gelatinous that is, so it's very nice quality. I'm gonna throw in our bay leaf. Give that a stir and let that fawn on the bottom start releasing. I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of my homemade Frank style cayenne pepper sauce. Now 
that's gonna give it some real zip. And then I need a teaspoon of Worcestershire. One of the nice things about Rachel Ray's recipes is she does a lot of stuff with things you already have on hand so that you don't have to cook everything from scratch, which is nice. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of extra time to this. I need to refill my time jar. Don't we all need to refill our time? I'm gonna give this a quick taste. I suspect I might need to water this down just slightly, we'll see. Mm, that's good. This water is hot. I always like to rinse out my stock jars with a little bit of extra water since it's so jelly-like. Some of it stays in there. All right, we're gonna let all this simmer for not very long. I don't think it's gonna take a long for this stuff to, to really get going, maybe five minutes, and then I will start adding in the chicken, and then I will add in the shrimp, and then it will be dinner. This comes together quite fast. thing that's going into this jambalaya and really the inspiration for it was I grew okra this last summer and I had quite a bit of it. We ate quite a bit but we had extra and so I blanched and froze it and there's a video on that and the okri is um, if you watch Lazy Dog Farm on YouTube, he's from the South, and he doesn't say okra. He says okri, and so it was kind of a cute thing this summer, and so we, I wrote okri on the package. But we are going to add this okra to our jambalaya, and I suspect I probably could have left the flour that's in this out because of this okra. Even though this okra has been blanched and drained, it's still going to have quite a bit of thickening power. And we could have probably have just simply left the flour out of this and ended up with a pretty good thickening power. It's not going to take a lot to cook this, so I'm going to stir this in. I'm going to add our chicken. And this is about a pound of cooked chicken. If you didn't have cooked chicken, you could have used raw chicken and just sauteed it before we added the onions. So saute the chicken first, then add the onions and peppers, and then add the rest of the ingredients, and you would have ended up in the same place. Because this is already cooked, I didn't want to overcook it, and so I'm adding it late. Mm. Our flavor is really good. We're gonna give this another at least five minutes to come up to a full simmer. And then we're gonna add in our shrimp. So we'll be back in a minute. It's looking good. That was about another five minutes just to give everything a chance to get warmed through. I'm gonna add in our shrimp. And these were, I forget the count, but pretty good sized shrimp and I cut them in half just so they weren't quite so big. And then I took the tails off because nobody really wants to pick out tails. So I just would rather have food that you can eat and not have to fiddle with. 
So we're gonna put these in here. We're gonna give this another five minutes or so. Shrimp cook really quickly, and if you overcook them, they get very rubbery. So it's, you always wanna add them right at the end. And we don't wanna give this too much time, but we'll give that a chance to cook and let those get pinked up in that beautiful, flavorful broth. Let's see, I think this is ready. Beautiful. Yeah, shrimp look done. I'm just gonna kill the heat on that. I turned it up a little bit because it was taking forever to get to a boil. Remove that bay leaf. All right, and we are ready to eat. I always forget how quick jambalaya comes together. It's really a fast dinner once you get everything chopped. It's not something you need to simmer for hours, which is good because I'm hungry. I used to have this really great wooden rice paddle and I somehow it's disappeared. I think it must have gotten accidentally tossed. Um, I'm a big fan of rice cookers as opposed to cooking it in a pot or cooking it in an instant pot. I do not like rice in an instant pot. I've never had it come out well. This is basmati rice. This is just a, what would be considered a single serving, which for us is actually three servings because we don't eat a ton. And the one caveat I will tell you with a rice cooker, you can spend all kinds of money, you can spend a little bit of money, get a nonstick pot. It sticks like crazy if you don't. And other than that, I think they all pretty much work without a lot of drama. I really covet the Zojirushi one that wins all the America's Test Kitchen tests, but it's well over $100, and I've had this one for probably 15 years, and it works just perfectly. I don't need a new one. And we are just gonna dish our beautiful jambalaya over our rice. This has homegrown peppers, onions, and okra. And then we, we made the andouille sausage in this, and actually we raised the chickens that is the smoked chicken in this. So lots of good homemade pantry challenge ingredients here. And you can make this as spicy or as not spicy as you like. So lots of good options there. Mm, that looks beautiful. There you have it. Really quick jambalaya with all kinds of homegrown ingredients. Give it a try. Thanks for watching Tribe. If you like this kind of content, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and please subscribe. We have new videos coming out every week.